No matter where you come from, no matter where you're going, here's a place where you can take comfort in the knowing that whether if you've come to stay a while or just passing through, this door is open to you. Come and let's be silent. Come and share a hug. Come, let's pray together. Come, love and be loved. From the blessed out to the turned out, from the pampered to the abused, this door is open to you. Come on. I'm not alone, and someone cares for you. As an individualization of divine point of view, this door, this door is open to you. Oh, this door, this door is open. Oh, this door right here, this door is open to you. Is open for you. This door is open to you. Oh, this door, this door is open. I'm talking about this door. morning everyone all you smiling faces online and all you smiling faces in person out there so as we come together this morning we are grateful for this opportunity to spend this time with our unity community we welcome those people who are online with us now and those who may watch later and especially those who are live at Unity of London on Nelson Street. Hi, everybody. So in March, our power for this month is wisdom, which is the highest form of spiritual knowing and includes divine judgment, discernment, and intuition. Wisdom is located in the pit of the stomach, and sometimes we do know that when um, you're feeling a little uncertain about something, that you feel a little not in your stomach. So that is the power of wisdom, looking for you to think a little bit more about what is happening. And so today we affirm, I am guided by divine Bye. wisdom in every thought, word, and action. In every thought, word, and action. So our vision at Unity of London is a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And so our mission that goes along with that has five parts. And the mission is co-creating with spirit to transform lives through sheer, shared spiritual awakening, transforming lives through our shared spiritual awakening. And we can do that by being a loving, inclusive community, because we are all wonderfully made. We are all sparks of that divine power. We also can promote self-expression in the kind way. So without self-expression, life lacks spontaneity and joy. Without service to others, it lacks meaning and purpose. 
So we just be ourselves. We also follow the five principles, which are God is, I am, I think, I pray, I live. And we also inspire people to make a positive difference in the world. And that can be very simple, like sanding somebody's driveway when it's icy outside or loaning them an umbrella if they don't happen to have one or smiling at them now that things are opening up a bit. You can actually see people out and about smiling at them as you go by or maybe giving them a little wave. And by providing fellowship and education for spiritual seekers of all walks of life, of life. Now we know that there are lots of uh, programs and so forth that are coming up in, and on currently right now at Unity of London. And we'll talk more about that later. Speaking of which, we do have a new course and it has already started called The Point of Power. Practical metaphysics to help you transform your life and realize your magnificence. Wow, realizing your magnificence. So Pauline Duncan Thrasher is hosting that on Tuesdays at two different times, 1 to 3 or 6.30 to 8.30. So we are thankful for Pauline for doing that course and also thankful that she is offering it twice so that Lots of people can attend. Now, today we have a breakout room and uh, a prayer chaplain, and that is with Sylvia Vanderhoek. And so what you can do is if any of you um, would like prayer that, are on, that is online, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll set that aside for you. Uh, or those of you that are at Unity of London, uh, Sylvia will be in the prayer room. So that is, that is really great. Now, the other thing too, okay, uh, we also, before I go into prayer, we also have our annual general meeting on March the 20th. So make sure that you stay after service to be able to attend that and to um, just provide some guidance for our board, participate, and just find out what's going on. So now as we go into prayer, if you just like to relax and close your eyes and make that conscious connection to the divine spirit within. And so we bless everyone attending all spiritual gatherings, knowing that there are many paths to the one God. And during this Lenten season, we let go of fears, negativity, and doubt as we renew our awareness of the good in and around us. We continue to hold peace for the situation in the Ukraine, pain that, praying that calm minds and loving hearts will prevail. We lift up all the people who have left their country and the brave souls who have remained to face the dark and dangerous situation. We also lift up anyone who is experiencing any challenges, knowing that they have the strength and the love of the divine spirit surrounding them now. We take this opportunity to hold anyone that you wish in blessings and prayer and to speak their names quietly into this space. We bless our fellow unity organizations and today especially Unity of Calgary. And so as we move forth into this day, we understand and affirm that I am one with all that is. And so it is, and so I let it be. 
And Don Briglio, who is our platform assistant today, will be sharing the daily word. Don. Okay, it doesn't look like Dawn is there right now. So good morning, she, Dawn. No, <laughs> she's up on the stage. Okay, here she is. They told me to say good morning, Dawn. <laughs> good morning, Wilda. Good morning, Dawn. <laughs> Just tell me when to start, guys. You can start right now, my friend. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. Today's daily word is entitled glory. My life celebrates the glory of God. Glory fills the world with wonder. When I attune my senses to it, I hear it in the sound of waves crashing on the beach and in the resonant harmony of a choir. I see it in the sunrises and the sunsets in the beauty of the gardens, the mountains and forests, and in the eyes of parents holding their newborn child. I feel glory in the depths of my being at those moments when I understand my life as God's life living as me. There is no place where my human self ends and the divine presence in me begins. God and I are one. The glory of God is revealed in me as I release the thought that I am only human. God's glory shines through me as the divine presence, the Christ, expressing in my healthy body, my insightful mind, and my loving heart. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Galatians 2, verse 20. I have the honor this morning to introduce our speaker for today. Wendy joined the Unity Movement in 1984 and received her licensed Unity teacher status in 2000. Best known for her teaching history of Unity and Bible courses across Canada, she also serves on teams at the national and international levels. Wendy is honored to be back in the city of London and with her talk this morning called Lent 2022, Release and Renew. Please help me welcome licensed, licensed Unity teacher, Wendy Carr. Thank you, Dawn. It's great to be back. I wish I could be with you in person. Uh, this too will come to pass at some future date. So it is the first Sunday in Lent. And as some of you may already know, Lent is 40 days plus the Sundays. And if you've already received your Unity Lenten booklet, you'll know that on Sundays, we actually have a little bit of a lesson. And that's going to be what I'm going to talk about today, uh, a season of grace. So. The, as uh, Wilda said earlier, our power of the month is wisdom. And there's a beauty of wisdom in the time of Lent, in that we can use our wisdom to determine and discern what it is we're going to let go of and what it is we're going to add on. And that's one of the things I've always loved about Unity. I came into Unity as an older teenager, uh, and I was really sick and tired of being told I had to give up chocolate for Lent. Um, that's, that, that's like a, a uh, communion for me. So, you know, don't tell me about giving up. And that was the big thing for me as a child was that Lent was about giving up. And in our booklet, we're invited to let go of whatever doesn't serve us, but add on something that might assist us, that will help us to grow, that will help us to bless the world. And I think we can agree right now, the world needs all the blessings it can get. So, 
So our season of grace, uh, and I just would like to honor and appreciate Reverend Joanna Gabriel. Uh, she was a unity minister who wrote this piece. Uh, she passed, unfortunately, last September, and uh, I'm sure she is well missed by her family, friends, and congregants. And uh, she was described as a unity minister, spiritual counselor, chaplain, teacher, workshop facilitator, singer, and storyteller who lived in Toledo, Ohio. Blessings to you, Joanna, on your journey, wherever your soul is taking you right now. So she based her talk uh, on a book by uh, Eric Butterworth. Uh, some of you may recall that Eric Butterworth was born in Winnipeg. So, you know, that's our Canadian content. We do have we do have a lot of Canadian unity history. We just haven't talked about it enough. So in the book, Celebrate Yourself, which is a series of essays, um, Eric not only talks about, you know, how to celebrate yourself, but how to put that into practice and how to get into graceful living. Sorry, uh, I got a windstorm over here and something just blew over. Uh, so we talk about, and, and Eric encourages us, as did our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, to take up things around Lent, to make it a positive time, to make it a desirable time, to make it a time when we are sharing of ourselves, when we are learning to grow, rather than what traditional history, it's traditional Christianity has taught us through history. Um, I actually, my, my specialty in history, aside from unity, but my academic specialty is medieval studies. And Lent in medieval study in the Med Middle Ages was horrible. I'm sorry. Uh, you were fasting almost every day from just about everything, how the human society managed to survive and procreate, and I'll just let you guys fill in the blank there, um, is amazing to me because obviously people weren't following the rules to the letter of the law uh, since I'm here. And I know that my my ancestors, you know, date back into Europe uh, of that time. So let's try to move that from uh, a tradition of I'm a worthless, you know, worm of the earth into I am a child of God. I am God in expression. I am as God seeks to express through me. And let's move into that. So Joanna and Eric invite us to uh, do the following. Uh, first, to retreat, change your emotional location. And here she writes, why not make this year's Lenten series season different from others? Sorry. Uh, time spent away from our normal activities and way of life helps us reconnect with God in prayer. Choose the 40 days of Lent as a spiritual retreat from excessive noise, news, and distractions. Light a candle. Taking breaks for journaling and music is ideal for transformation. And our affirmation from Daily Word is, I give my mind and body permission to rest and relax. And I invite you to consider taking this time, taking some conscious time. It doesn't have to be the whole day. It doesn't have to be 24 seven of the, the whole of Lent, but to carve out for yourself, to make an appointment with yourself for 15, 20 minutes a day, in addition to whatever you're doing. But in that 15, 20 minutes, turn off your social media, turn off your TV, turn off the radio. There is enough bad news for the rest of the day. Just take a break from it. Allow your body to rest from all of the news that is happening. That's not to say to put on blinders and pretend nothing is happening out there because there is plenty happening right now. Uh, right now, I've got a windstorm out my window. There is plenty happening. It is a time to rest, a time to seek that within ourselves that tells us that we are God in expression. We are that blessing to the world. Our second thought is to return and change your heart. What false beliefs, hurts, feelings, anger, burdens, unfulfilled desires, or bitterness have you hidden in your heart? Lent can be like spring cleaning for the heart and soul. Try filling your heart with love. Perfect love will cast out fear or anything unlike fear. 
I always talk about metaphysical dust bunnies. And let me tell you what a metaphysical dust bunny is. I sometimes I need to make a, an image of it, but a metaphysical dust bunny is a belief, a thought, a memory that you thought you had cleaned up. You thought you'd done your forgiveness work around. You thought you'd done all your denials and affirmations around it. And all of a sudden you're in meditation or you see something or you smell something or there's a song on the radio. And all of a sudden you're back in that moment because there's still a tiny bit that hasn't totally been swept out. I likened it to the difference between, you know, using one of those old corn brooms that, you know, we, we imagine Harry Potter riding or a witch riding, you know, in, in, at Halloween and using a, a product that's got microfibers in it that seems to take up more of the, the dirt and debris. So that's the difference is that idea of bringing forward our, our opportunity to uh, take that moment, clean it out. And please, if nothing else, please be gentle with yourself as you're doing it. The fact that you had a belief or you had a trauma or you made a choice that ended up being undesirable, it might have been and probably was the right and perfect choice at the time. But now you've moved on to something else and it's time to let go of that. It's like as a child, you know, did anyone else have favorite clothing that they outgrew, but you tried to get into it because it was your favorite? And then you ended up having to cut yourself out of it and totally destroy it because it no longer fit. And trying to fit yourself back into it just doesn't work. Our third thought is to change your thinking. There must be a letting go of old thoughts before the new can find place in the consciousness. You know, you, you can't put uh, more garbage in the garbage can if it's overflowing. You have to empty it on a regular basis to make space for whatever is next to come. And that's true of desirable things and undesirable things. You cannot receive if you're too busy holding on to what you have. So let go of the past. Make a cre clean break from the hopelessness, helplessness, and lockdown fatigue. Create a consciousness of celebrating life. Let happiness overwhelm you. Let love light the way. Get in touch with gratitude. Change your thinking. Change your world. Uh, before I came on the call, I was reading a blog where somebody suggested that somehow in this time of COVID, we in the, the spiritual community has lost sight of our joy. And I had to think about that. I was like, yeah, I'm joyful, aren't I? And, and thinking about it, I have to be honest, I have lost some of my joy. My joy meter is not where it was before COVID hit. And so this afternoon, I'm going to look into some ways of bringing back more joy into my life. And I invite you to do the same if that's something that resonates with you. Our final step is to renew and change your mind. That's all that, that renewal is about is changing your mind. That's so sounds so simple. It can be so hard because we held on to it for so long and with such emotional ties and with such intellectual ties that allowing ourselves just to peacefully say, okay, I release. I know we're singing that after, we release. So how can we change our mind though? Well, there's a number of things we can do. We can write, we can let go and practice graceful living by, living, by giving small and thoughtful gifts to someone without expecting anything in return. I have had so many blessings like that, and I hope I have blessed others equally with that. Not that it's a ledger, but just that I am enough in the flow to remember that to receive is to give. Provide compassionate and supportive words and actions. You know, we had a conference yesterday for a mini conference yesterday for Unity Canada. And one of the things we talked about was empathy and compassion. What does that mean? How do we express that? How do we surround ourselves and, and fold those around us with empathy and compassion. By sharing yourselves with others, you're taking your mind off your own circumstances and putting it on love instead. You can create a season of grace. So grace, when I was growing up, it was something you had to earn. Unity doesn't teach that. Unity teaches that 
grace is there all the time. Grace is another word for love. And so we share this gift of grace. We share this understanding that we are in a space of divine love, divine wisdom, divine peace, divine everything. And that as we share, we become a blessing to everyone else. I have likened it more than once to being as a lighthouse. Lighthouses do not run around the island looking for ships to save. Lighthouses stand firm in the midst of the storms and shine their light out. And so too for us that we stand firm in our faith, in our wisdom, in our understanding and express and share that light and love. Sometimes we are a beacon for someone to find us, for someone to find unity, for someone to find a different way of living. And sometimes we're just a, a light that shines out and shows someone hey, there's a pothole coming up. You might want to walk around that. Hey, look at what's coming. Can you see the beauty of Easter morning yet? We're not there yet. We've got a few months to go. We've got a few weeks to go here. But Easter is coming. Spring is coming. And next weekend, the clocks are changing. So we know that spring is coming when that happens. And let's be enthusiastic about life. It can be challenging. I do not doubt that because I, like many of you, are living alone, have lived alone through this pandemic. It has been challenging, but that doesn't mean I can't be enthusiastic about life. Sometimes it's about the simplest things. Bought myself a smoothie maker. I love and have the experimentation of smoothies. But, and I can ex exude that enthusiasm and share that love of whatever with others. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody has to go out and make a smoothie or ask me for my favorite recipe, but, and we can share that gift. We can share just the fact that we're enthusiastic because let's face it, if you meet someone who's enthusiastic about something, whether it's, you know, their grandchild or their great grandchild or the flowers that are starting to come up in their garden, you share that enthusiasm. You are blessed by that energy. And so let us, you know, not be concerned about making everything right, but about seeing it right, about experiencing it in a way that blesses not only ourselves, but all. And now let us move into a time of meditation. Oh, and just taking a deep breath. Heart to heart, hand to hand, soul to soul. I just invite you to find that space, find that space in yourself where you feel the oneness, where you feel your connection to your family, to your ancestors, to your spiritual family here at Unity of London and elsewhere. And indeed where you feel your connection to the whole world even to those with whom you may disagree. And breathing into this consciousness, my prayers joined with others to create world peace. And we just breathe into that phrase, world peace, knowing that peace begins with me. Peace begins with my ability to take the speck out of my own eye and make myself the clearest possible channel for light and love and peace to flow into this world. I see myself as a lighthouse, firm, able to withstand the winds of life able to withstand the storms that threaten to overwhelm us, able to be the calm in the midst. And we unfold in light and love, not only Ukraine, but other areas of the world where things are happening that are undesirable, that are frightening, that are life-threatening, 
that do not express peace and harmony. Knowing that we do not know all the stories, we cannot know all the stories, but what we can know is the truth for all. That each is an expression of God, even when to human eyes we want to say, what the fluff are you talking about? How can God be in them? And yet this is the absolute truth. We just allow ourselves in the silence to hold the world in light and love, seeing it infused in the silence. And bringing from our Clinton booklet, pages eight and nine. I release problems that seem overwhelming. I renew my awareness of my spiritual nature. I release a habit of judging others. I renew my commitment to see the divine in all beings. I release doubt, confusion, and indecision. I renew my divine power of wisdom. I release my fear of moving forward. I renew my willingness to step out in faith. I release pessimism and negative thinking. I renew my positive expectations. I release my habit of worrying. I renew my faith in divine order. I release discontent and criticism. I renew my gratitude in all things. I release any apathy or boredom. I renew my zeal and enthusiasm. I release my belief in limitation. I renew my sense of possibility. I release the fear of not having enough. I renew my awareness of abundance in my life. I release any drama or conflict. I renew my inner peace in spirit. I release any sense of discouragement. I renew my hope with the power of affirmative prayer. I release the habit of digging in my heels. I renew my practice of non-resistance. I release thoughts or fears of illness. I renew my openness to the healing power of spirit. I release fears of being alone. I renew my connection with spirit, self, and others. I release old grudges and resentments. I renew inner peace by forgiving. I release any need to complain. I renew my outlook through appreciation. I release anger and blame. I renew my patience and compassion. I release my darkest fears. I renew the strength and courage of my heart. I release the shadows of grief and sorrow. I renew myself in the serenity of silence. And as we bring our time of meditation to a close, we affirm within ourselves, with mind and heart, I know the truth for each person I hold in prayer. And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen. Well, Wendy, thank you very much for that Lenten talk. <sighs> So there were a couple of things that came to mind for me. One was the idea of giving up chocolate. Good thing that that's not one of the things that we need to do now. Because last night I served up chocolate lava cakes for dessert. And so there was lots of chocolate there and it seemed to be enjoyed by all. So that was good. And the other thing, <laughs> 
not particularly spiritual, but something that brings me pleasure is I got a new air fryer for Christmas. So it's been really fun to be able to just try different recipes and to cook things in a different way. So there was a lot more depth to your talk than chocolate cake and air fryers, I know, but it's that all of that just brings me joy as did your talk. So thank you very much. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide. Yes, I So we are grateful every week for the people who continue to support Unity of London, the home that spiritually feeds us. And so we are grateful for your tithes, your offerings, your donations, your time, your talent, and your treasures. And if you feel called, you can certainly send a check or you can e-transfer your donation to Unity of London at hotmail.com. And we affirm right here, right now, that Unity of London is prosperous. And so now the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me. I am the light. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love. The power of God protects me. I am the power. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is and all is well. Yay, God. So now we'll sing our peace song.
All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. And if you've got any comments for Wendy, um, please uh, put your hand up or let's uh, or for those of you at Unity of London, if you want to come up and just uh, come to the very front or maybe they're going to have a uh, microphone out there. I'm not exactly sure. I don't